best of luck, and this is the last time, really, that I'll be speaking as Allie. Because in my mind, I've already kind of left her behind, but I still have to carry her around um, on the day-to-day. -day. This is sort of the last day where I really have to do that. Once I start HRT, I'm really going to start the process of fully coming out, fully switching everything over. Um, so these last days, as my former self, they're strange. <laughs> um, I've been ready to let go for a while, so... Instead of some sort of, like, excitement or celebratory mood or feeling really energetic, I'm kind of just ready to, like, let some of this burden off me. Um, I'm ready to deload, to de-stress it, to dip into the water of the unknown and just swim in that for a while. Hi, my name is River, and on February 20th of 2018, I hit my one year on testosterone work. So in the last clip that you just saw, that was the day before I got my first shot. And that clip is really meaningful to me and important to me because throughout my transition, I've kind of returned to that moment and watched that and realized just how much I needed to do this. Um, I can just really see it in the stifling of my spirit. And going through this experience over the past year has really freed me in so many ways. Um, I'm incredibly grateful to be where I am now, and I wanted to share that and share a snapshot of this past year and the journey I've been on. One of my worries going in was, is he going to think I'm trans enough? You know, because I'm not using a different name, because I'm not using male pronouns yet. Is that going to somehow put me in the camp of not being eligible? I know that's kind of a silly fear, but it's one of those things I think about a lot. You know, am I at that stage where it's considered acceptable to do this yet? Um, it's been kind of rough lately. I feel like I was at a point of knowing, like, I'm getting all these things lined up. I'm going to start tea. It's going to be really exciting. And I forgot that these kind of, these processes are full of hiccups and I wasn't really expecting it to get me as down as it did. Tomorrow is the day where I have my first shot, so I will be technically starting HRT on February 20th, which is kind of nice, like a nice round date to remember. A huge thing was starting to really feel in control again of my transition. When things started to get a little weird with insurance and medication and pharmacy and everything just kind of went out of my control realm, I didn't deal with that that well. And I like having more of a sense of where I am, where I'm going. I'm just very mapped out that way. I like feeling like I have markers on a map that I know I'm going to get to. And having the shot down and then knowing that, okay, for X, I think, for the next like nine weeks, I'm good. You know, I have one doctor's appointment in there, but that's, I'm set, you know, for that nine weeks. So it put me back in the driver's seat of my transition and feeling like it's mine and I can take control of it again. Um, 
So the biggest thing lately in weeks three and four is that I really noticed a big mental change. Um, I have felt really calm lately, uh, much more in control of my emotions than I have felt in a long, long time. Um, just an overall sense of like peace, calmness, control of my feelings, um, and clarity of my feelings. That's a big one too. Um, a little personal history on stress for me, I've never been good at handling it. Um, I can operate under high stress, but I don't, it just seems to be that I put myself in pressure cookers. I'm very hard on myself and I expect a lot and I take on a lot and that ends up putting me in a position of just having to deal with a lot of deadlines at once, a lot of pressure on my shoulders and it can be overwhelming and I'm learning, I'm learning how to not do that so much to myself. I think in the past it was almost like I invited stress to combat anxiety because I wanted to escape all of the things that I was thinking in my head and all the racing thoughts I had. So I externalized it through taking on a bunch of things to distract myself and I don't know, it's almost like creating chaos to fix chaos or you're so used to feeling chaotic in your head that you create a chaotic environment around you to go with the video. But my chin hair has really started to come in. So from here to here, that's all thickening out. And what I've noticed is it's starting to creep up. And also I'm getting hair in this area. Um, that's new. I mean, I had like peach fuzz here, but not where I was getting anything dark. So let's start there. My voice is is definitely changing and it makes me feel really good. I, I have felt a lot better talking lately. Um, even going into this video and shooting, I feel a little bit more confident just using my voice and hearing it. Um, I kind of went back recently and was listening to older stuff that I shot and being able to compare it was a nice reminder that things are getting there. And I really had to fully come out. Um, I was out to friends, I was out to some of my family, and, but I wasn't being too assertive about people calling me River or using my preferred pronouns, which are he, him. I like, I'm definitely starting to get tired. Um, I've been growing nonstop for three months and it's exhausting. It's exhausting. And I know that I'm training really hard and I'm also forcing my body to grow by like eating more and I'm putting those strains on it, but I have these goals for how I want to look at that one year mark because as much as three months is a milestone and every day is a milestone in a way, one year is a big milestone. Biggest thing that I've experienced lately is passing. So it's kind of weird. I, in general, thought that the experience of passing was just going to be very positive and make me really happy and like excited and cool and comfortable and whatever. But just starting to pass on a regular basis lately is actually, it's kind of weird. Um, because you start to notice the changes of people seeing you as your, your actual gender identity. Like, crying is a very different experience since I've been on testosterone. It's just so different. I think I've only cried maybe three times since February, like, which for me, it's like typically I would cry like three times a week. <laughs> I mean, so it's a big change, but 
even if I cry now, it's just so muted compared to what it used to feel like. Like when I would cry prior to starting testosterone, it was like someone took the ocean and like just let it loose on me and my body was just like hit with these waves of feelings and I don't know it was it it was so strong feeling like that that it was almost euphoric in a really weird way it was like the deep deep end of sadness was almost cathartic I don't know it's hard to really put into words how immensely I would feel things Looking back has been really important for me and documenting this has been crucial and being able to get over the times where I'm like, nothing's changing, I, this, this doesn't, this isn't, this isn't going how I expected, blah, blah, blah. Having these photos provides a lot of solace and so I forget about singing. I can't, I can't sing anymore, like, it's just like, it's ridiculous, like I try to engage myself in songs that I used to like, you know, kind of like belt out once in a while alone, let's be clear about that. But now when I try to do that, I'm like, sad songs are almost funny to me because I'm trying to sing these and it's just, I'm murdering them, but I think eventually when I adjust to my voice, I'll be able to actually like sing again but <laughs> at this point no way like my voice will just pitch out and conk out or like it's like a rusty like trombone like it just doesn't it doesn't work but after that happened to me i just took rest and recovery really seriously i was so weak my muscles were done after all of those convulsions i needed time to just heal and relax and be scared, you know? I really had to take time to sit with myself and let myself be scared. Because it was scary, and I think I just kept being running from the fear of it. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know how to really best treat it. What's scary is I don't really know when it's gonna come on. They seem to pop out out of nowhere. And I definitely am more careful in terms of running my body into the ground or, you know, if I drink, I'm not going to go out, I'm going to have limits. Just trying to be very cautious around, around what I do and how I treat my brain. This is the last video that I'm going to make prior to top surgery. And that's really, that's really huge to me. Um, it's incredible, honestly. Like, it does not feel real. I feel really happy about it. I feel really good. Like, I have all of this stuff on me and this compression vest, and I, I already feel better. So it's just kind of euphoric, honestly, at that point. But. So it's really good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you can see now you've got some mild swelling, some ripples. But yeah, lethargic today, tired. I actually have more pain today than any days during this. And it's mostly just, um, I just feel really weak. I feel really tired. I think it's from traveling. So today is the first day that I saw my chest without anything covering it and I'm incredibly grateful and so happy right now. I just took off the incision tape and I can't believe how clean my scars look. Um, I'm honestly getting emotional because before now I feel like I didn't really get to like see myself. You know, there was always something covering it. but. This is the first time, and it might look kind of gnarly, but I'm only 13 days post-op and a week since I had my drains out, and I've been cleaning everything, and I just took off that tape because it didn't fall off, and I thought it would be really puffy and really dark, and it's not. It's really nice and light. I mean, 
I'm someone who has really struggled with depression, anxiety, self-doubt, terrible self-criticism. And after having the surgery, I can honestly say that I started to think about my future in a positive light. I started to actually envision myself doing things. And it was happy. It wasn't envisioning myself and thinking that's unrealistic or that's not going to happen. I finally was able to see myself living life. You know, when I started testosterone, I had a little bit of that too. And, but this was really phenomenal in terms of feeling like I can actually start living now. I'm not going to lie, 11 months is kind of crazy because next month I hit my one year and it's really weird. Um, there's so much emphasis put on the one year on T. Like, maybe that's just me, but I, right when I started, that's all I could think about was, well, when I'm one year on T, you know, what am I going to look like? What am I going to sound like? What am I going to feel like? Who am I going to be? Like, it was this really big date. And now that I'm at 11 months, that's in a month, you know? This is the last one I make before that. And for so long, it felt so far away, and now it's here. So that's a huge lesson that I keep learning from this experience is you set these long-term goals, and you work on them and work on them consistently with dedication and persistence. And all of a sudden they arrive like they sneak up on you at the end and it just cements the fact that it's real you know if you start something out with a long-term vision and you just keep it there keep it in your keep it in your eyes you know <laughs> like keep it in your mental image you will get there you now like and i have a lot of discomfort and dysphoria around my voice and Hearing that played back to me and hearing myself talk out loud, it's, to be honest, it's kind of an uncomfortable experience and I want to heal from that and I want to learn to be able to speak with confidence and feel proud of the sound of my voice and what I have to say. So I've envisioned this moment for a long time. I held it in my head from prior to starting hormones, to the day I started hormones, to every month since. I have some, for some reason held the one year mark in front of my eyes. And I'm here now. I'm really here. I think that we put a huge emphasis, like those of us who, who do pursue hormones, I think we put a huge emphasis on the one year mark because we can envision it. It's not so far away that it's unreal, yet it's far enough away that it gives us a realistic look at what we're actually facing. I know for me that I think in my head, my one year mark probably is gonna look a little bit more like my five year mark. <laughs> I think that's probably a typical um, mistake, if that's the right word. But you tend to paint a picture of yourself, of where you wanna be. And I'm not quite there yet, but that's fine because transition doesn't end. You know, life continually changes, and I'm still on a path to changing. And I'm relieved for that. But I'm also relieved to be here. <laughs> I'm relieved to have made it. Because honestly, as much as I envisioned it and the concept was real for me to be at one year, it also felt like a fantasy. I honestly didn't know if I'd be able to make it here. So, <sighs> the fact that I did, I'm extremely grateful and I'm really proud of myself. 
because I was really struggling and I just wanted to be in a better place. And I had these clues of how to get there. You know, I didn't, I never chose to be trans. I feel like being trans chose me. And it appeared to me when I was 28 years old, it finally like light bulbed for me. That's a lot of years to be in an identity that isn't really you. And when I started hormones, I was 29. So to be 30 and hit this one year anniversary and feel like I'm starting, you know, that maybe a third of my life is, is behind me in that identity. And to be here, it's surreal, but it's so beautiful that I made it this far. Um, I had so many fears of the unknown, you know, what would I look like? Um, what would I sound like? I didn't know what my name was going to be. I wasn't going by the pronouns I go by. I had no idea what my body was going to look like. If I was going to have crazy mood swings that would, that would put my already shaky mental health into a worse place. I had no idea. But I knew I wanted something better. <clears throat> so I started. <laughs> I decided to start because I knew if I didn't, I would always regret it. And this year has been filled with so many changes. And I'm blown away, honestly, by how overall positive it's been. I have changed so much as a person. But I feel so much more authentic and real and grounded and actually part of this world. So yeah, it's just been incredible. But just to like, in this past year alone, I changed my name, I changed my pronouns, I started putting testosterone into my body, I got top surgery, I gained over 30 pounds, my, I've struggled with anxiety still, but I've almost eliminated my chronic depression. And that's just in a year. And now I have so many years ahead of me that are filled with hope. But the biggest thing is, is that I got to meet River and I got to share him with everyone else. And it's weird to talk about yourself in third person, but I finally really got to see who I am. And to actually be that, that's incredible. All right, so one year on T, I made it. I made it. <laughs> and I'm very grateful I did. It has been amazing to share this experience with, with everyone who has connected with me on social media. I really appreciate it, truly. The positivity I've received over this past year has been incredible. Um, I'm glad that I shared my transition. I'm glad that I put myself out there and was vulnerable about it because the love and support I've received on the other side has been incredible. So I want to just thank you for sharing all of those moments that made up this incredible year and sharing this moment now with me on looking back and appreciating it. So thank you and I'll talk to you soon.